Spirit. Father, as we go into your word, open our understanding and let there be transformation. Thank you for healing and deliverance. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'll go straight into our devotion study this morning before we do our confessions. Now, don't forget that um, we're still doing our uh, intimacy evangelism, our intimacy campaign. And what we have asked you to do is find one of the Conversations with God videos, the link to the YouTube video, all right, of Conversations with God, and send them to five friends, five family members, five people on your contact, okay? And tell them, please watch this video, and I would like to have your feedback. When they come back with feedback, or when you call them for feedback, you know, have a discussion that take, gives you the opportunity to present to them the privilege <clears throat> that God has given, all right? And then introduce them to int intimacy. How do you do that? Just tell them to create a time to be with God every day. All right. Those who are just born again or who are not born again, lead them to Christ and tell them to start with a 15 minutes time. All right. Those who are already saved, they should be able to do 20 to 30, the minimum, I mean, minimum of 30 minutes. All right. So you stay there and then you worship and then you read the Bible. That's all you need to start with. And then we'll be, we give, we'll be giving them more details as, as, we, as they go on. But the first thing is to create a time. Anybody you love, you have not created time for, you don't truly love. If you truly love them, you will spend time with them, right? Very important. All right, so our study today is access. And we've been looking at access. This will be the last of this series on access. And today we, are, we have seen um, the access by the blood, access um, through worship, access through thanksgivings and praise, you know. So today we're looking at access from the perspective of sonship. John chapter 17, verse 23. I in them and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Now, God is talking to us there, and Jesus is praying to the Father and asking some specific things. Matthew chapter 5, sorry, John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. Then answered Jesus and said, you know, in that prayer, Jesus said, so that they can know that you have loved them as you have loved me. You know, love, that, that God loves you the way he loved Jesus. Because we are joint heirs with him. So Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. So he's showing us that the son has access to the father and the father shows him the, the things he's doing and that he's going to show him more things. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, but I has not seen, for, but at his, as it is written, I has not seen, hear has not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. So he's not going to go and prepare. He has already prepared it. Verse 10, But God has revealed them unto us by his sp Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have revealed. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. All right. I'm going to read the devotional. Access is power. The more access you possess, the more powerful 
you become among men. Access is one thing we must always seek to have. And the greatest of access is the access to God. And once you have that, you, you, you don't really need any other access. You know, once you have it and you know you have it and you are persuaded and you, uh, you have it, uh, it, it's awesome. Access to God, the maker of all things and all humans. Access determines where you can go and what you can do. We have seen different accesses. We have to the Father God and the Lord Jesus. Today, we are looking Today we are looking at the last of this first series on which is sonship access. All right. Today we are looking at the last of this series, which is sonship access. A child or a son has direct access to his or her father. So also we, the new creation, Jesus said, that the Father loves us the same way He loved Him, or loves Him. This makes us God's beloved. And it gives us constant access to the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we can approach Him always because we are His children. So because we are His children, we have access. Your child has access to you can enter your room. This access also gives us access to some other deeper things and dimensions in it. The access to the deep things of God and the greater works he does and wants to do. So there's more expectation. You know, so when you have access to God, you are not just accessing, you know, uh, uh, pre the, His presence only. You're also having access to some deep things. And these deep things are the things that create greater works. So as children, He opens to us access to His deep things. The, these are ideas, inventions, solutions, His unstopped plans and purposes. These things sets us higher than others and gives us the advantage over others. These things give us advantage. When you have access to the Father, you have access to innovation, the next innovation, the next idea in your industry, you have access to it. Because before the Father will release it to the realm where men can catch it, it remains in his own realm where his children are allowed to come. So these things set us high. Now, I want to try. Okay, good. The, the other access that we also get is the access to the greater works that God is doing. That's why Jesus said that, look, I do what I see my father do. I say what I hear him say. And if you are confused about this, guess what? He's going to do greater works and he's going to show them to me. So God gives us, his children, access to his greater works. That's why if you are a child of God, you will see God use you, you know, for the greater works. Jesus said, he that believes in me, the works I do shall he do, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go to my Father. So you're going to do greater works, relevant to healings and casting out of devils. You have to believe for it. Why? Because Jesus was the one that said, you're going to do it. It's a prophecy. It's going to come to pass. Then you are also going to do greater works in your field of calling, assignment, skill, and gifts. So there are different fields. I mean, your gift may be in the field of um, education. And you find out that you are able to simplify things. You know, you can take something and then put it in a simple way, teach it in a simple way. And that's your talent. Do you understand? And then you may 
have instead of studying education probably you've studied law that's your skill at the moment or you studied architecture that's your skill at the moment you understand and then by calling god might have called you you know to help um um, um maybe like what we are trying to do the search young people to be able to find their purpose and find themselves and discover who they are and discover their personal walk with God, you know, you might have been called to that. So we're talking about, you know, uh, all, all the different fields. So, yeah, I mean, if you're teaching young people purpose, that's ministry. If you're an architect, that is um, environmental science. And then if you have the talent to be able to break things down, make it simple, that's education. All right. So the, 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 the skill, the gift, the potencies and the potentials that you have will work in different fields. And it's good to find the right ones, the right places, the right, you know, and not just develop skills that are contrary, contrary to your calling and all of that. You understand? So, but what will you find out is that if you are skilled in a particular area, God will show you greater works in that area. If you have talent in a particular area, God will make sure you do greater works in that area of your talent. If you have a gift in a particular area, God will make sure you do mighty things in that area of your gift. All right? You have interest in a, mighty, in a particular area, God will show you the great things he's doing in that area so you can do it. So the greater works, we have access to them because we are sons of God. We have access to our Father, and then we have access to the greater works. We have access to his works and the greater works. The Father... Jesus told the religious set that the works he is doing are the works of the Father. And they are nothing compared to the greater works that his Father is going to show him. And he will be able to do them also. Now, and Jesus was ready to do it, but he realized he had to die. So that's why he said, you guys, you are going to do the greater works. Because I can't wait he said, because I go to the Father. He that believes in me, the works I do shall he do, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go to the Father. Because I have to go to the Father, you have to do the greater works. God is going to show you the greater works. All right? He's going to show you that big idea, big innovation, so that you can apply it and do awesome things in your field. Jesus also told us that we believers in him will also do the greater works. He mentioned that he is leaving the greater works for us to do because of his return, because his return to the Father is urgent. At 33, he had to return. So he left for us greater works to do. So as a child of God, if you are in working in the banking field, that's where you're working. You should do greater works there. Meaning you're supposed to, you know, Carry out your tax in such a way that everybody's like, wow, how does he do it? How does he do it? You are excellent. You are productive. You are powerful at what you do. Why? Because God gives you ideas, innovations. It works out solutions for you. Angels support your results, uh, 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 your obtaining of results. That's the greater works. You must have expectation for this. You must pray about it. You must confess it. Why? God wants you to demonstrate greater works. That's how God separates those who serve him from those who don't. That's how God separates his jewel. You will now stand out as God's horn. And then you become a beacon of light to many. And people will want to be like you. And then they will come to Christ. Jesus said, go into all the world and be a witness. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. You have to do the greater works to be a good witness for Jesus. So it continues. He goes to prepare for us a place. We are left to, doing, to do the greater works which he allowed us to access as we access the Father God. We see what he is doing and we do the same and his glory fills the earth. And that's what's happening. You will see people that will be doing mighty exploits. 
Why? Because the hand of God will be mighty upon them. The grace of God will be mighty upon them. And they will do outstanding things. Because God's hand is resting on them. We have sonship access. Let's take advantage of it. I want you to pray this morning and say, Father, I am your son. I accept the access to you and to the greater works that you have for your children. I receive it now in the name of Jesus. Pray that in the Holy Ghost of Papuko Tofli and Daka, Aziasa Papeko Dukende Kadiaso, Zofia Parakadaska Dikata, Azam Papuko Tofle Bike Piscore Ankaliotoso, Lord Almighty, Takato Scofienende, Aria Papasco to Colusophia Mese, Zansuko Papuko Tofle Bia Pecatoni, Agalia Sacadofle Bike Piscore Gada, Azaka Papuko Tofriamba. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Glory to God. All right. Now, let's go into our confession for today. So, declare with me and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. All things are new in my life. I am a brand new person. I've been washed with the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, my body, organs and systems, bones and cells, genes and DNA cannot be corrupted, deformed or defiled by any force at all in the name of Jesus. I declare I have been washed with the washing of the blood. The blood of Jesus flows in my lineage. Therefore, all negative experiences and diseases of the whole bloodline have been purged out of my life and my lineage. The covenant in the blood of Jesus is the only covenant that speaks in my life and in my lineage. I declare Christ is my covering and my head. Christ is my root and my foundation. No other foundation speaks in my life and in my lineage but Christ. In the name of Jesus, Christ redeemed me from the curses. Therefore, I cannot be cursed. I am the blessed of the Lord, and my blessing cannot be reversed. In the name of Jesus, I declare, in the name of Jesus, I am a spirit, and my spirit is in perfect connection with God. Therefore, I have fellowship with him every day. I hear his voice. I have conversations with him. Every day, I engage his presence in the name of Jesus. My soul has been liberated from the control of the law of sin and death. So I mind the things of the spirit. My body is in subjection to me, the spirit, and the Holy Ghost. Therefore, all lust and evil affection of the flesh have been crucified in my own flesh. I am a child of God. I am born of God. God is love. I am love. I walk in love. God is holy. I am holy. I walk in purity. I do not sin. God is righteous. I am the righteousness of God. Jesus took my place in judgment, took responsibilities, responsibility for my sins, past, present and future therefore no sin no accusation and no charge can be leveled against me i am justified i am the righteousness of god i walk in the glory of god in the name of jesus the beauty of god is in my life in the name of jesus i am meek and lowly in heart i have rest in my soul in the name of jesus I have the spirit of humility and the mind of humility from Christ. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I am submissive to God, his will, and his counsel. So he exalts me in due season. And I enjoy abundance of grace in the name of Jesus. I declare the will of God has prospered in my life. I am the blessed of the Lord. And my blessing cannot be reversed 
in the name of Jesus, I am empowered to prosper, to go forward and to do well. I have the power to get wealth. And by this power, wealth is flowing into my life. Money follows me and serves me as my slave. I am blessed with abundance of it. My land is fruitful. I'm blessed with lands and properties and all means of transportation as a seed of Abraham in the name of Jesus. I have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. The healing power of God is at work in my body. I live in sound health. I'm surrounded with favor as a shield. I'm highly favored everywhere I go. Men, elements, and all of creation, systems and policies favor me in the name of Jesus. I have the wisdom of God for all situation. I and all that are mine, we dwell in God's sacred place, under God's shadow. No evil can befall us there. No plague can come near us. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. We are inside it and we are saved. In the name of Jesus, I declare with long life, the Lord has satisfied us. Therefore, we shall live to declare the glory of God in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus, I declare my home is God's habitation and heaven on earth. My home is God's dwelling place. I and my spouse, we are one. As the Father and the Son are one. Our children are taught of the Lord. Great is their peace. They are holy seed. They know God. All their lives they serve the over. And they are mighty on the earth. They are great. In the name of Jesus, God has released his hands upon my purposes for fulfillment and accomplishment. Therefore, I am manifesting my destiny. I cannot be stopped in the name of Jesus. I am head and never tail. I am from above, so I'm above all in every field and industry where I'm engaged. I'm anointed with the oil of gladness. I'm seated upon the thrones of David and Christ. In the name of Jesus, the best of the industry and fields where I'm engaged come to me in the name of Jesus. They have come to me in the name of Jesus. I have the mind of Christ. I have the excellence of Christ. I have the intelligence of Christ. I operate by this and I do exploits in the name of Jesus. I am God's chosen, God's beloved. I am God's elect. Therefore, today, I am victorious. I am triumphant. I have overcome all. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I declare the spirit and anointing of God is upon me. So I manifest the fullness of Christ's character. Thinking what Jesus would think. Saying what Jesus would say. Doing what Jesus would do. In all situations. In the name of Jesus, I manifest the fullness of Christ's power. I cast out devils. I lay hands on the sick. I do the greater works. For the Father shows me the greater works. In all fields of life, in the name of Jesus, I manifest the fullness of Christ's wisdom. In every field and industry where I am engaged, I demonstrate the wisdom of God. I have from Christ's wisdom, solutions, answers, advancements, increase. I do exploits by the wisdom of God. I manifest the fullness of Christ's presence. Everywhere I am, the presence of God soaks the place. Sinners have come to Christ. The sick have been healed. The oppressed have been set free. Yokes have been broken. Demons are fled. The powers of hell have been seized everywhere I am. And the glory of God has covered the earth as waters cover the sea. In Jesus' name, 
Amen.